Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now talking about the abduction of about 317 girls in Jangebe in Zamfara State. So over the weekend, news, you know, broke, so to speak, that the girls had been released and they were, you know, in the palace of the Emir of Anka waiting to be transported to the state capital and, you know, back to their parents. But the state authorities, the um, Zamfara State Commissioner for Information and Culture, Suleiman Tanau Anka, tweeted on sad Sunday afternoon that the students were yet to be released. He went on to ask people to ignore news regarding the release of the abducted students, saying it's not true, but, quote, the state government and security are trying to do their best. Recall that a week earlier, bandits had kidnapped dozens of pupils and workers of the Government Science College in Kagara, Niger State. The abductees were released on Saturday and bandits had, you know, last December kidnapped over 300 schoolboys from Government Science Secondary School in Kankara, Katsina State. So it's been like a string of abduction of secondary school boys and girls in northern Nigeria. Uh, to discuss this, we've invited a uh, legal practitioner, Libosa Shoma. Uh, good morning, and thanks for still being here. Yeah, good morning. Let's address, first of all, this misinformation about the release you know, of these boys. When the Kagara boys were still in captivity of the bandits, we saw stories like this. You know, lots of people said they had been released. Even a few people were interviewed said, confirmed that they had been released, but the government was yet to make it public. And it wasn't until days and days later we found that out. So would you say this is misinformation or that the government is holding some truth from us? Um, in, um, in, in uh, the absence of information, rumor thrives. And when rumor you know, start to spread, even intellectuals are turned to convey your bets. And so you really won't know who is speaking the truth. You know, some persons since last week have been saying they've been released, some says they have not been released. Um, same way we play politics with you know human life, so that's basically what's happening. But quickly before we even go for that, I want to you know just you know draw an anal analogy. Um, at the time in Ogun State, you remember uh, about three or six students were kidnapped, and eventually they were released. And um, you know that saw the end of kidnapping in Ogun State. It never repeated itself. In April, April 14, 15, 2014, about 276 girls were kidnapped from Chibok in Borono State. We debated it, you know, we called for President Jonathan's removal, international community, you know, everybody it was um, almost like a movie, a big screen cinema, bring back our guests. Everybody started carrying placard, bring back our guests bring back our guests, 276. February, 20, February 19, 2018, our Messiah, the general, who uh, Tenubu said she would come solve all Nigerian security problems, was president. And 113 girls were kidnapped in government technical school in Dapchi, in Yobe State. Played politics, at the end of the day, they said, um, ransom wasn't paid, but the guests were returned, excluding one who is still in captivity. Yeah, That's sure. um, Leah Shaibu. Yeah, sure. um, then in December, December 11, 2020, 344 boys were kidnapped in Kankara, Kassina State, about 15 kilometers from uh, the president's village, Daura, and the president was on working visit in Daura. In December 2020, 20th December 2020, 80 students of the Islamia school in Mahatu town in Kasina were also kidnapped. February 17th, 2020, 27 students of the Kangara students in Niger were kidnapped. Those are still in captivity. And then February 26th, 2021, 317 girls in Jangibu. And so, it happened once in 2014. The entire world almost came to Nigeria. And now, between 2018 and now, five times. What has happened? Why the silence? Is it that we are so used to kidnapping now that, you know, it's not part of us? Or that um, we are scared to tell the president the truth the way we told the former president the truth? 
And for me, like I always say, the day we want solution to Nigerian problem, that day we'll find solution. It brings me back to the issue of the Senate um, romanticizing the president, looking for fine words to, 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 to paint a very gory picture. Children, you know, even as an adult, an adult that is in captivity, the, the trauma that that adult will go through, not to talk of a child in captivity for years, like Leah Shaibu, not to talk of children you kept in captivity for months, days, you know, you use them to trek. The American that was kidnapped in Niger and brought yes. to Nigeria, American, we didn't even hear that he was kidnapped before he was rescued. American did not negotiate. You can say, oh, because it's one person. But why do we have snipers? If you train snipers and you have, let's say, 30 men kidnap 317 children, where did they take them through? They took some with al -Qaeda. So definitely they are not taking them with a lorry. And yet in these places you have checkpoints. In all of these places, you have phones. They are making contact. You are government even admitted that they are negotiating for their release through the repentant members of this group. That means they've established contact with these people. What you are telling others is that it pays to kidnap. And once people know that there's a business is lucrative in Nigeria, everybody will go into that business. Especially when government, who is the biggest spender, you know, is involved. Some persons have said, look, uh, this is a problem created by leadership, failure of leadership. And so the leaders did not have failed them, like even some have mooted. And so that is why you have all of this. And so the best way out of it is to negotiate and then find a way to correct the defective leadership. That's a tall order. You know why? In Casina State, sometimes in 2019, the Kansina State Governor, Aminu Masari, negotiated, not only negotiated with bandit, bandit, granted them amnesty, but did that stop kidnapping in, in Kansina? No. We also remember in um, the Niger Delta, we granted amnesty to militants, but did it stop kidnapping? There's still kidnapping going on. And the only way you can solve this problem, you have failed them, yes, but it is not to consistently empower and enrich them to make more money, to buy more arms and take more people. It is to put your foot down and say, not just to say we will not negotiate with them, but to take the heat to them, make kidnapping um, 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 unattractive. In Italy, in Italy, there was a time kidnapping was the order of the day, kidnapping for ransom. What did they do differently? They, they banned ransom. They outlawed payments. ransom payments. And that it became a crime for you to even pay ransom. They didn't just ban ransom and folded their hands. They ensure also that they went after the kidnappers. Why is it that in Olu, in Olu, the Minister for Defense, uh, the uh, uh, Chief of Defense Staff has said we should defend ourselves. So people who are defending themselves in Olu are being at labor terrorists, and the army is coming out heavily on them. But you have terrorists who are terrorizing people and taking people hostage in the north. And government is saying we should defend, we should let, let, discuss let, with them, up, um, we should dialogue with them, we should pay them money because we fail them. What is, your, what is your response? Didn't we fail those in Olu and the rest of us, who we negotiate with the rest of us that are not yet carrying arms? What is your... Uh, that, that's actually a good you know, uh, point to even bring up, you know, the, the seeming... PR that seems to be going into you know the banditry these days. Um, and, um, there's different stories about how you know they they you know are angry with government because government disappointed them and that's why they've gone into banditry and you know different reasons. But I want you to first of all you know address the narrative that they cannot be rescued because they they need to avoid casualties, possible casualties. It's not possible. It is not um, for me. That is um, a very defective way of uh, avoiding responsibilities. We know, I'm not a security expert, but I speak with, you know, quite a number, both within and outside of this country. And we know fully well that if you want, even if you want to rescue 
500, 1,000 school children that are kidnapped. Those that are guarding them will not be up to 1,000. So what they do, those that are trained for such operations, what they do is to set up strategies and ensure that when you get to those places, there are some, all of them will not even be, let me paint a picture, a clear picture of this. What they do is some cases they separate the children, you know, for easy management. So they will not keep all of them in one place. And so for you to have such numbers in a place, it means that it is not a hidden place. You know, it's a place that can be accessible. And so if you have, let's say you keep 100 in one place, the number of people that are going to, you know, be protected, there will not be more than five, at least 10, worst case 10. Out of those 10 persons, you will have like two that will be somewhere making contact. And then you have another two that will be on the road for surveillance and vigilance to, to ensure that if there are people coming. So if you want to take out these people, it's very easy. It's very easy. You have your snipers and then you have your, um, what do you call it, undercover. And so all you need to, even before they, they are aware that you are around, some are already on the ground. At the end of the day, maybe one or two persons will use, want to use one or two child as human shit. But that's why you have trained snipers. And that's how, you know, serious-minded countries deal with crimes such as this. If it seems but so easy as you've it's very easy. Why, it is why, very easy. why is the government stalling then? That is why, if you pick the newspaper this morning, the governor of Zamfara is telling you that the people will be shocked at those behind all of this. Because when you... Look at... Let me give pen the picture. Look at all those cattle rarers, all those headsmen you see in the bush. bush. Do they look like people who collect three million... 5 million ransom. Yeah. But they are the kidnappers that you know. But there is somebody somewhere. Do they even look like people that uh, will keep money in account? But there are people somewhere who are the beneficiaries of this you know, ring, who give protection, who give cover to them. Some of them are in government. Some of them, of them are big business people. So... And that's, those are the people that, even be, that might even be providing solutions to you on how to deal with it. But, but we have a, we have we a, can, we, a we, DSS, we have intelligence um, agencies in the country that why should is it be able that? To first, first and foremost, we identify that a particular section of the country, particular people from a particular tribe, Fulanese, are terrorizing others using their cow. The first solution for us is... Oh, look, these are not Nigerians. They are Fulanese, but they are not Nigerian. And then the next one is, let us create grazing routes for them. Are you admitted that they are not Nigerian? So it means that you, you are sympathetic to the cause of these people, either because you are a beneficiary of it, or you just don't want a solution to it. And so, and that's why, and then when you now have some of these persons in, in position of authority, they are going to look the other way. They don't care whether people are dying. And so you just call agencies. Oh, you have DSS, you have this. In all of these acts, what role has the DSS played since we... The intelligence gathering agency. What role have they played since we... This issue of kidnapping started? Apart from you hear that they are negotiating ransom. I saw... Um, let me just quickly throw this in. I saw... Um, I'm not sure who it was now, but there was a, a particular interview that happened in the last 48 hours where... Someone who had said the president should be giving kudos um, for, you know, successive rescuing of um, girls from Dapchi to Kagara uh, and yes, the rest of the them. And so us. he should be giving kudos and, um, of course, encouraged to do more, um, including this one. That's why I'm telling you, because we are scared to tell President Buhari that he has failed, that he should resign. Or even the National Assembly is scared to impeach the President Buhari for failure of providing security, which is the paramount purpose of government. And so, rather, we say uh, uh, the Chibok guests were not released until after the election. And so, for this one, people have been kidnapped five times and they have all been released. But we don't care how much we are spent to release them. We don't care. We don't want to look for the captors. Or in all of these that I've listed, nobody has gone to jail. Nobody has been arrested. Okay. And then we talk about dealing with Boko Haram. Nobody's even discussing Boko Haram again. Oh, we have shifted our attention now to kidnapping. And then somebody will say, let's commend the president. The president you hardly see, you hardly hear from, apart from his media aides. And that's the problem. That's the big problem. W would you say this president is just Buhari, it? Sorry, quickly. President Jonathan didn't do, didn't 
underperform as hard as this, where we all call for his head. Now also, why, what's wrong? Why are we not calling for Buhari's head? A member of the APC that was criticized, that criticized the president was sacked and then was arrested. And so everybody is scared. We are all dying in, by installment. And so we wait until that time happens. And we say, no, I don't want to be part of uh, this. Uh, so President Buhari has not done anything for... for, for I did, even the president does not deserve a second term. The, the one thing, that, apologies, Anita, the, one of the things you started this conversation with was talking about how the world, you know, um, was on its feet when Chibok happened. Yes. Um, and it seems to be entirely different Our now. Our media drew yeah, attention of the war to Nigeria. Yes, yeah, so you can't kidnap 270-something guests in one swap. It means the president is a buffoon. It means he's ineffective. There was no name we didn't call him. Even the current president protested. They march on the street. So what is the opposition even doing? The PDP, for example. And that's why for me, you, we are the ones in opposition. You see, uh, what do you call it, governor of uh, uh, Kogi, visiting PDP leaders, APC leaders, and the rest. These people are not quarreling. And that's why it's very convenient for them to move. The PDP is not a party in opposition. They don't even know how to play opposition. Apart from issuing statements, um, uh, or Lombo D or things. All uh, opposition is just about issuing press releases. You know that's for him is opposition. They don't know how to play opposition. They will not suffer the consequence. Worst case, the opposition themselves to be beneficiaries of whatever defect. Just the same way this uh, 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 model called call them incompetent bunch in APC also position themselves to be beneficiaries of the defect in PDP. And that's why they can even moot the idea of even fronting uh, good luck Jonathan. As ineffective as President good Jonathan right. was let, in, in his time, a, um, um, let's have sorry, more. quickly, as ineffective as he was, President Buhari has raised the bar of ineffectiveness, of incapacity, okay. of ineptitude. Okay, quickly reacting to that, we saw that uh, Lai Mohammed said school kidnappings happens even in the most developed countries. I don't countries. want to respond to Alaji Lai Mohammed. He's somebody I used to respect when he was in opposition because I used to think he meant, he meant uh, uh, those statements then. But now I discovered that money and position can change the, the, the best of sense. And um, now it is so shameful. I ask myself sometimes, what will Alaji Lai Mohammed want to be remembered for in Nigeria? What would he want his children and grandchildren to remember him for? When we talk about him, when he leaves office tomorrow, what would people talk about? Anyway, because we have short memories here, I have never, anytime Alaji Lai Mohammed opens his mouth to defend this government, I, I, I quiver. And I ask myself, is this the same Alaji Lai Mohammed? He's so bad now that people call him Alaji Lai to his face. And yet you still, you know, if your children were kidnapped or your grandchildren are among the kidnappers, right. will you, in all honesty, tell your family members that people, children are also kidnapped in America? Mr. So Shuma, we're, we're really deal. running out of time. But just, just quickly before we wrap up, Ole Shrinka um, gave a suggestion to how we can tackle this problem. He says any states where children are kidnapped should shut down in protest. Would this work? Well, are we ready to protest? When you protested in Lagos, we saw what happened. Even when people now attempted to go back to the same toge, we saw her combat ready police. He's advocating a statewide protest, even from the state government, the, not just the individuals. Government, government are looking for money. Government, you send police to them, they'll say we have been abandoned. When, remember last week, the Niger State government said it was abandoned. Nobody's asking him how he spends his security votes. You know, so now you hear them, even if not or the, or the President Buhari, Say, spokesperson issued that statement that they were not ready to negotiate. Uh, sorry, uh, the chief of staff representing the president. Even the governor said they were ready to discuss. So these right. same governors that are ready to discuss with abductors to, to, to secure their position, are they the same people that would protest and, 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 uh, and are not thinking of solutions? Mm. Right. They're not even right. thinking of how to create you know, local security? Look yes. at Amoteku in the southwest. We debated Amoteku, oh, the attorney general this, attorney general that. And at the end, it's just another uh, 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 security, uh, uh, what do you call it, gate men wearing uniforms. You know, All they're right, powerless in as far as security is concerned. Alibar Sushima, thank you so much. Thank you very um, much. Yes, I, I understand there's too many angles, you know, that you know, need to be spoken about with regards to this. Because I have this, children this, uh, in school, I can two. imagine. Absolutely.
Mm. We're out of time. We'll be, of course, back uh, right next to talk uh, about the demolition, you know, that, uh, of course, uh, is taking place here in Lagos, the Oshodia Papa uh, shanties that have been demolished. Thank you very much, Libra Soshoma, uh, for stepping in. And uh, we'll be back after the short break.